Uh, welcome back. We are now looking at hypothesis and research questions in quantitative research. Uh, deciding the research question and hypothesis of a study is a very, very important aspect of conducting a quantitative research study. This module will talk about both these concepts and explore how to identify and create these two important aspects of quantitative research. At the end of this module, you would have understood the types of research questions, the key elements of a good research question, possible sources of research questions and process of identifying or preparing research questions. You would have also learnt about the types of hypothesis, the process of developing hypothesis and errors associated with hypothesis testing. First, we will talk about the research question. What is a research question? It is obviously a question. It is a very carefully worded question that addresses an aspect or a concept of the research. It is a key element of the study because it defines the main purpose or direction of the research. Defining this idea in terms of a testable research question is an essential aspect of the research. You might know what you are looking at in your head, but you should be able to clearly put this out in the form of a question which can then be tested. Okay? That is the research question. Quantitative research questions usually explore relationships between variables in, in the research study. The focus of a research question should be on answering the following questions. What are you trying to find through this research? What are the questions for which you seek answers? What is the geographic area for your research? Where will your sample come from? What is your time frame? How long are you going to take to complete this research? The answers to these questions will help you frame your research question. For example, one research question could be, what is the extent of burnout among counsellors involved in HIV AIDS counselling in Mumbai? So, you have your geographic area, you have your question in terms of what is it focusing on, the magnitude of burnout amongst counsellors and your geographic area. Second example, do supervisory practices help counsellors involved in HIV AIDS counselling in Mumbai cope with burnout? This deals with the understanding of relationship between supervisory practices and coping capacities of counsellors working in the field of HIV AIDS again in Mumbai. So your geographic area is once again covered. You've, now these are two examples of research questions. Where do you get these research questions from? You don't just sit and make them up. You identify research questions from a number of dis different sources. For example, practical experience. When you are working in the field in practical situations, you might find your research questions emerging from there. They might be things that you want to see answers to. They might be phenomena that you are observing that you would like to understand and explore. Real life work situations are an excellent source of identifying research questions. Research questions can come from literature review. Like you learnt earlier, a literature review involves a critical appraisal of concerned literature on a topic. While doing a literature review, you have an opportunity to study existing research and find out gaps in the research, okay? what the limitations are, what are emerging trends, you know these as well. So from these you can get an idea of what questions and issues are unexplored or unanswered which you can then focus on in your research. Untested theories. Uh, sometimes researchers give you further scope for uh, research or there are untested theories that you know. These are a good source of research questions as well. You can use existing theories to test their applicability in different situations otherwise. Okay? So untested theories or alternatively use theories that are already existing and have been tested but they have been tested in certain situations. So you test it in other different situations. Brainstorming with colleagues, friends, faculty can also give you a very good idea on developing and refining research questions. So, or you can do this last. Once you've done the first three things, then you can brainstorm. How do you brainstorm? First, make a list of possible questions that you can use that are related to your area of interest. Then narrow it down to three or four questions. Then read additional information on each of these to explore if anybody has investigated them before and if so what were the results found. You need some amount of literature so you don't want a question that has never been looked at so you have nothing about it nor do you want something that has been researched so much as nothing to find out. 
and then based on your readings refine the questions and finalize them there is it is not necessary that your research have just one research question you can have two or three research questions okay now what are the three types of research questions there are three main types of research questions each of which will tell you more about the kind of study you're doing one is a descriptive question these look at descriptions of issues or situations they normally have only one variable and uh, the direction is not specified in these studies for example your question would be what percentage of low income children complete primary schooling so there's no there's no comparison of variable there's only one variable right explanatory questions which explore a particular issue or a phenomena and involve two or more variables for example is there a relationship between maternal education and children's school completion here you are only looking at is there a relationship not what the relationship is about because you are only exploring and in explanatory questions you would look at what is the relationship for example does smoking cause lung cancer to what extent or even the previous question what is the relationship between maternal education and the extent to which children com children complete school okay the type of question you ask will determine the type of study and will then relate to the material that you will use for your study now you have an idea of what a research question is and the types of research questions and from where you can source your research question but what is a good research question a good research question should be significant in that it should make a contribution to knowledge or it should address a gap in existing knowledge it must be feasible you cannot have a question which is very good but impractical to do feasible for you it might be feasible for somebody else but it needs to be feasible for you if you want to do it so your resources such as the time you have the money you have the number of subjects you can look at the personnel you have if you are carrying it out at a masters level or at a phd level your resources are going to be limited so you might want to focus on a small thing and then later take it out in the field when you're working and look at it at a larger extent okay you need to also take into account whether it is possible to manipulate the desired variables the way you want to do so okay then the research question must be clear concise and grounded in updated theoretical or empirical knowledge so it cannot be floating in the air it must be grounded in theory or knowledge your research question also must be ethically sound you cannot conduct a research that will cause potential harm to respondents if you're looking at child abuse and you're looking at specifically at ch child sexual abuse unless you can provide counseling for the children whom you're interviewing you should not do it because by asking them questions you're going to create discomfort in their minds and you're not addressing that then though your research question may be sound in every other way it is ethically wrong so you cannot do it okay so you need to make sure that you are not causing any harm to your respondents how do you write a good research question first very obviously a research question is a question it's not a statement second it must be very specific third it must be practical and it must be conducive to research that is empirical investigation the question must relate one variable to another unless it's a descriptive study where you have only one variable it must mention the sample population covered it should be interesting it should be based on a thorough literature review it should be well articulated and all the terms should be defined clearly you could frame it in a novel different manner you can think outside the box to do so do not have too many variables in your research questions because then you will not be able to find the answers to it so two variables three variables fine six variables no 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 don't do that it should be objective should avoid value judgment so you can say that the higher the income the better the education but you should not say that the quality of education uh, 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 or you you cannot have a judgment to it you're just stating facts right you cannot say that uh, uh, people who have uh, in high income are the ones who will go in for uh, good education so here you're giving your value judgment okay so you say is income linked to when you're framing it as a question you say is income linked to education so that is a non judgmental way of framing it you just say is income linked to education 
So that gives you a research question which is non-judgmental. What is a hypothesis? Now we are coming to the hypothesis because research questions lead you to hypothesis. Okay? A hypothesis is a statement that helps answer a research question that explains the relationship between two or more variables. So when we are saying that income of the family, does the income of the family relate to the education of the children is your research question. Then your hypo hypothesis could be uh, income of the family has an impact on the level of education of the children. Okay, that could be your hypothesis. Okay, you state it in advance of the study and you test it during the study. Your hypothesis will help you keep the study focused. It will enable the interpretation of the results against an established framework because your hypothesis provides a framework for your entire research. Your hypothesis will come from theory. Okay. It will include the independent variable and the dependent variable, the predicted outcome and the population of the study. So in our uh, hypothesis that we framed a minute ago, we did not include the population. So we had reframe it to say that the income of the family has an impact on the level of education of children in such and such a uh, community or in uh, urban slums in cities like Mumbai. Okay, so you define where your study sample or population is going to come from. It indicates the direction of the relationship with the between the de dependent and independent variable. You can frame it to say the uh, higher the income, the more the likelihood of higher levels of education. In which case you are saying that income and education are positively linked, okay, are in direct proportion for example. So you can have positive uh, relationship where one area will increases and the other also increases or when one decreases the other also decreases or you can have negative where one increases and the other changes in the opposite direction. For example, you could say higher the level of uh, maternal uh, education, the lower the rates of infant mortality. Where maternal education is increasing, infant mortality is coming down. So these are examples of hypothesis. None of these are value judgments. They are just statements. Okay? Hypothesis is always a statement. A research question is always a question. Characteristics of hypothesis. First, that it is a statement and not a question. Two, it is not a moral or ethical statement, but it is a testable statement. Okay? Three, it is stated prior to conducting the study. 4. It predicts relationship between two or more variables. 5. It can be tested and either verified or falsified. So your hypothesis will either be verified or it is declared false. 6. You cannot keep it too general or too specific. It must be very clear and crisp. Okay. Uh, if you make it too specific, you might not find and you might not have enough information to validate it or reject it. Okay. You must state it in clear and ambiguous terms like we did in the examples. 7. It is derived from theory. 8. It, like we mentioned earlier, it shows relationship between two or more variables. How does the hypothesis come from? Theory is a starting point. You develop a hypothesis, then you collect data or you observe and you either confirm or reject your hypothesis. So, it is a cyclic process as you can see in the figure. There are two types of hypothesis. Okay? There is a null one, some, what is known as the null hypothesis or the statistical hypothesis, which says that there is no relationship between two or more variables. For example, you can state that there is no relationship between teacher training and student performance. Or you have the alternative hypothesis, which is known as scientific hypothesis, which is the opposite of the null hypothesis. You get this when the null hypothesis is rejected. For example, if we say there is no relationship between teacher training and student performance, then our hypothesis could be if there is an increase in teacher training programs, then there is an increase in student performance. So these are alternatives. It's, it's, an, it's usually stated in if then statement. Conclusion of a quantitative study is usually expressed in terms of the null hypothesis. A study can either conclude that the null hypothesis was rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis or that the null hypothesis was not rejected. It is important for you to realize that just because a null hypothesis was not rejected does not mean it was true. It just means that in the particular context there is not enough evidence to reject a null hypothesis. 
Now that you've understood the two types of hypothesis, you need to learn about the two types of errors. Both the errors are associated with these two types of hypothesis. Type 1 error occurs when null hypothesis is wrongly rejected. For example, in our earlier example, when we were talking about teacher training and student performance, we defined our null hypothesis as there is no relationship between teacher training and student performance. Let us suppose that our study result demonstrated that teacher training did not influence student performance. In this case, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected, right? Because it's saying that it does not influence student performance. If you still rejected it, what you're doing is a type 1 error. Type 2 error occurs when the null hypothesis is not rejected even when it is false. Again, using the same teacher training example, let us suppose that the alternative hypothesis is true and that increased teacher training does actually lead to an increase in student performance. This means that the null hypothesis is rejected in favor of the alternate hypothesis. But if we state here that the null hypothesis is not rejected, then we are committing a type 2 error. A hypothesis is a very, very essential and important aspect of the research study because it responds to the research question. When you are stating a hypothesis in advance, you are connecting your study with existing research and you are also providing a framework for interpreting the results of your study within the context of existing research. If your study gives a hypothesis or shows that a hypothesis is false, it is still a valuable con contribution to knowledge. It doesn't mean your study has failed. You've shown that the hypothesis is false, which also contributes to knowledge. Thus, we have explained and we have learned what a hypothesis is and what a research question is and why these are so important in quantitative research. To summarize, quantitative research questions explore relationships between two or more variables that you have taken in the research study. Research questions are identified through practical experience, literature review, untest theories or using theories in tested theories in new situations and also through brainstorming sessions. Research questions have to be significant, feasible, clear and ethical. Okay? A hypothesis is a statement that explains relationships between two or more variables. It answers your research question. It is derived from theory. A hypothesis is either confirmed or rejected based on an analysis of the data collected. The hypothesis usually indicates the direction of association or relationship between independent and dependent variables. This association or relationship can be either positive or negative. There are two types of hypothesis, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And there are two types of errors associated with hypothesis testing. Type 1 error which happens when null hypothesis is wrongly rejected and type 2 errors which happen when null hypothesis is not rejected even when it is false. I hope that now you are clear with what a hypothesis and what a research question is and you have learned how to frame both of these. Look forward to meeting you in the next session. Good day. Bye.